What's up everybody, I'm Jesse Showalter and in this episode I want to talk about the basics of user flow diagrams. So important for user experience designers just like you. Let's talk about some diamonds, some boxes, some arrows, and some flows. <music> All right, let's dive right in and take a look at a user flow diagram. But before we do that, what is a user flow diagram? Why does it even exist? Well, a user flow diagram is all about laying out the steps that a user might take to get from point A to point B, or maybe even point C, D, E, or F inside of your application or your website. We're mapping out all the options that a user could take to get from the start to the finish. When we jump over to my screen, you can see the beginnings of a really basic user flow diagram inside of Figma. And there's a lot of shapes, there's a lot of colors, there's a lot of things that, that are happening here. But what you need to know, first of all, is that this really is a diagram that's starting somewhere and it's leading somewhere else. It's built out of boxes and shapes and diamonds and rectangles, but really a lot of arrows and lines as we follow the path of all the actions and steps that a user might take. So let's dig in a little bit and take a look at all the individual little pieces of this user flow diagram. When we zoom into the very beginning, we can see that we have what's called an entry point. Entry points are really, really important to understand because depending whether or not it's a website or an application, the entry point could be a little bit different. For instance, in websites, a lot of times there's multiple different entry points. They could have come from social media and they've entered into a special page, a landing page, a sales funnel, and they're able to navigate around to get to that specific blog post or that specific flow somewhere in your website. Maybe you want them to sign up, become a member, or check out a certain article. There's lots of places they could come from. But inside of a mobile application or a lot of times a web application, usually there's one specific entry point. In mobile applications, they need to download your application from the store and then they need to launch that splash screen and that, that introduction of your application and then they possibly have been led to a sign up. So wherever we say entry point in our user flow diagram, we're assuming that they've gone ahead and downloaded, they've got it set up, and now they're entering the application. In web applications, it could be a simple sign up or login screen, but now they've landed into that initial step into the flow, which leads us to our next big point. Everything else that's gonna follow in our user flow diagram are literally the steps to completion. All the steps that a user might take to get to that destination or that end goal that they and us are trying to get them to. So we jump back over and look at our diagram and zoom out. Every one of these, even though they might be a diamond or a rectangle, they have different iconography inside of it. Some of the lines are dotted, some of them are solid. It doesn't matter. Every single thing here represents a step to completion. It's really important that you understand that. The next thing and the last thing that every good user flow has is really the final interaction. And so we wanna lead users from A to B. What is B? What does it look like? Well, when we zoom in, we see here that it's some sort of order that's been placed. The user closes that you know interface or that specific screen that they're on and they're led back around to some other screen. So the final interaction and then whatever comes next. It's really, really, really important that in every single user flow diagram, you're going to have the entry point, the steps to completion, and then your final interaction or your final action. All right, let's talk now a little bit about the specifics, the nitty gritty of this user flow diagram. What do all these boxes and shapes and lines mean? Let's dive in right now and take a look. User flow diagrams are customizable and they can be completely up to you how you build them. There are some industry standards though that I wanna encourage you to stick with. So let's take a look at a few of those now. A lot of times your entry and your final interaction will be a circle. It represents just that, that place where people are coming in and exiting your app, it's easy to identify the start and the end by using that circle shape. Next up, you'll have the rectangle. The rectangle is very ambiguous. You can make it whatever you want. I know some people do really simple plain rectangles. Some people have different shapes for everything, but rectangles for me and for most people represent some sort of screen or some sort of step along the way. And so um, it's the most common shape inside of the user flow. It can represent a page, a display screen. Unlike circles, there's usually no action to be taken here unless otherwise kind of annotated 
on the screen. You'll see that I use a lot of really basic ones. I even put these little browser dots inside of them to represent some sort of screen. This is the welcome screen. This is a screen where they're gonna be selecting tasks. And then sometimes, sometimes I'll actually put a little lightning bolt icon. This is just me. It represents that an action has been taken. Okay, so now we know about circles and we know a little bit about rectangles. What about this diamond right here? Well, the diamond is one of those non-negotiables actually in the user experience world. The diamond is commonly referred to as a decision diamond and this represents whether the user will pick yes or no, up or down. Will they select or not select? Will they approve or not approve? What happens based off of this decision? And so we're gonna ask a question, is this correct? Did you actually wanna do this action? And then we're gonna lead the user, or we're gonna diagram if the user has selected yes or selected no. What happens if they do both of those things? Which is the next piece we really need to talk about is all of these lines, okay? Everybody has different ways of doing lines and that's okay. You can create your own legend and your own routine and workflow on how you diagram things. But a line in general leads a user from one stage to another, from one screen to another. Now in my user flow diagrams, I tend to use solid lines to lead from one screen to another. And I tend to use dotted lines for alternate sort of pathways that the user might be able to take. For instance, in our situation here, the user had to select a task, they made the selection, and then we're gonna ask the user, is that correct? Did you really wanna pick that? And if so, if yes, we'll move them on. If no, there's an alternate route here that will lead them back and around to reselect that task. See, we are, diagramming all of the possible selections that a user might take on their journey. So it's yes or no, we're gonna go ahead and annotate that. Here's a few th key things you wanna keep in mind when it comes to your user flow diagrams. You wanna make sure that you keep your colors pretty chill and pretty minimal. Now you can come up with different colors. For instance, in my use case, I have these dark filled blue circles versus these light blue kind of outlined rectangles, but you do wanna keep it pretty minimal. Otherwise, people will start to focus a little too much on the design of the diagram and not the content. Think of this in a very similar way as a wireframe. We don't wanna to put too much aesthetic work into it. We just want to annotate things and give some rhyme or reason to all of our shapes. So dotted lines, solid lines, filled, outline, you decide, but really keep it very, very simple. Here's the next thing. We wanna make our labels really, really meaningful. For instance, we don't wanna just put the word screen. We wanna put what kind of screen is there? Is it a detail screen? Is it a select task screen or a welcome screen? If we're gonna move people on from a decision diamond, what were the outcomes of that decision? Is it yes or no? If it's something else, if it's approve or disapprove, we wanna annotate those in our tags. For instance here, they searched. I'm not gonna put yes or no here. I'm gonna put found or not found to be as descriptive as possible. Okay, another one, be really consistent with your user flow diagrams. Make sure that if you create something or some sort of style that, and it has meaning, that you stick with that meaning and you don't mix or match. That way people can look at a diamond and know that that's a decision. People can look at a, an icon that's used and know that that's an action. People can look at a circle and know that that's the start or the end of your flow for your user. Now you might be asking yourself, okay, what comes next? After I've created this user flow diagram, what's, what's the next step in the process? Well, the next step in the process could be to refine this user flow diagram even more. After you've created wireframes or maybe even high resolution screens, you can circle back around to your user flow diagram and replace all of your shapes with those wireframe or those high resolution screens. Then your user flow diagram becomes something a little bit more, possibly a wire flow or a screen flow, which are just higher fidelity. You can also annotate more here. You can put more detail into what each one of these screens has on it. Maybe you wanna put an outline of the content here, a little bit more like a site map and a website. That's completely up to you. You can make all of those decisions, you, your team, your clients, create a process and a workflow, but this is the basics of a user flow diagram. Well, that's it. Those are the basics of user flow diagrams. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to leave a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. I do videos about design and development and user experience design. So stick around, make sure you hit that little bell notification icon 
so you know when another video like this one comes out. If you wanna learn more about UX design or UI design, you wanna grow in your craft, then consider signing up for the free Discord server. The link is below in the description. And if you wanna get some more hands-on mentor time with me, then consider becoming one of my exclusive Premier members, the link is down there as well. All of my members get access to my design files, my user flow diagrams, all my tutorial resources, as well as behind the scenes, live monthly video hangouts, and a slew of other cool benefits. So check that link in the description to become one of my members. I hope you guys are having an amazing week. I hope you're designing amazing things. I hope you're making amazing things. And I hope that your users are flowing through your applications. See you in the next one.